before we start that um, explicit note, I'm going to swear, I'm going to be drinking. Uh, Sam's also having a beer today. I'm having a baby! celebrate our guests, and if you don't like it... Welcome to Staying Relevant, the podcast between two best friends on their quest for superstardom and fame. This is the one. I hate it when you say that we're on a quest for superstardom and fame, because we're not. We are, that's exactly... No, 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 we're not. All we're trying to do is stay somewhat relevant. You're on a quest for superstardom. I'm on a quest to earn some money before I die. And I will drag Pete's kicking and screaming with me to that quest for fame. Now, today's the big one, because we have a guest. We have a guest. Was that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, no more? We have it, yeah. Ooh, come on, you say it. What, who the guest is? Yeah, I'm really nervous. This is a big one. You have been really nervous about this one. Yeah, because I'm a big fan. You are a massive fan, yeah. actually. I slid uh, into her DMs. Yeah, so basically, the reason we've got, before we tell you who the guest is, the reason we have this guest is because Sam creepily slid in her DMs um, to ask her if she'd be on the podcast. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised she said yes. Why? We're fucking stars. We're podcast legends. We're I actually was driving a couple of days ago, so I went, hey, mate, I listened to your podcast. And I was like, yes. So this week's guest is... Sports broadcaster and general fucking legend, Laura Woods. Laura Woods, baby! Huge fan, talk sport, uh, done Sky Sports as well, and uh, really, really at the top of her game. Beautiful lady as well. Oh, all right. Well, not like that, as in just like, well, really. In what way did you mean it? Well, don't start being like that. No, just, I'm just saying. I mean, no, was, don't, because now I'm getting nervous. Well, it's just a little bit chauvinistic. There's no need to mention that. Chauvinistic. Yeah. Actually, we did get reviews. Do you remember where it was got toxic masculinity on one of the reviews on the podcast thing? No. Yeah, and after that, it just said gross. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Uh, Laura Woods. <laughs> Laura Woods, everybody. <laughs> Laura, how are you today? She's not here. Oh, yeah, well, I didn't know whether we were faking it. Oh, what, a whole interview? No, no, it's in like the, the start. Yeah, no, I'm really good, you. Yeah, yeah, the start of the interview. <laughs> oh, thanks. Come on, Laura! Oh, my God. Thank um, you. Don't know why the whole room's clapping. That's never happened. Thanks. Um, that's so nice. Never clap <laughs> us. That's so fucking out of order, all of you. Um, I, I want to clap every week now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, crack on then, Sam. Sam right. Sam's super excited about I'm this. I'm going to be honest with you, Laura. I am. Um, I was a bit nervous. I said to Pete no. on the way up here, I was like, I'm a bit nervous for this one. Why? Uh, my voice is going a little bit as well, actually. Really? Yeah. No. I, I, I'm a big, big fan of yours. <laughs> I've just yeah. learned this. I'm, I'm a huge fan. I, um, I've i got my football top on as well. Yeah. Just uh, So Law works on TalkSpot, amongst many other things, and, and I, I listen to you every day in my kitchen. Not in a weird way, <laughs> but big fan. I just, I'm, I love watching where you're going and how you're doing it. And you're basically, you do the job that I absolutely wish I had, by the way. Really? So Sam does this on, on the sly. He's got a separate Instagram account where he does his football blog. No. It's Sam T footy. And he discusses <laughs> Chelsea uh, regularly as a season ticket holder. Wow. Um, yeah, there's there's three or four people that follow and listen to him. I'm going to follow it. Yes! Oh, I'm I need to stop posting it. on it more then. Shit. Do you know what I, I have to say, which is really making me laugh, is I feel like Sam has... What would a football fan look like in Sam's head? And he's gone, yeah. right, well, yeah. definitely would wear a football shirt. He'd have a beer in his hand. Yeah. He'd definitely have a chain on and a hat yeah. and some high tops. Let's do that. That's, that's li literally, that's <laughs> literally what, what he's done. He's done. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like part of the lads. <laughs> We're going, mate. Let's have it. It's slightly offensive. Let's though, have it. Evidently, she's not a lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but where's your football top? I'm not wearing a football top because I'm not a fucking idiot. We've got a beer, though. You're a Spurs fan. We do. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Um, Thanks for having me on. Absolute pleasure having you here, um, mate. So the reason that you're actually here, though, is because Sam slid in your DMs. Yeah, you did. Do you know, can I tell you something funny? Mm -hmm. I actually followed you ages ago, and then I unfollowed you. <gasps> <gasps> me? Most people do that. I've actually muted him. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was. You were like flogging a microwave or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I've had enough of this. And I unfollowed you. And then, and then you... It's too good. I bet I know I'm what it so was as well. Sorry. <laughs> and then you followed me and I was like, oh, go on then. Let's give him bad. another go. Yeah, let's yeah. give him another go. Pity He's Pete's follow. mate. We'll give him another go. See, that's, <laughs> that's the real reason. That's how it goes. Actually, you know what, Laura? We were outside just now and um, we were sort of psyching ourselves up for this interview. So, sorry, psyching ourselves we up? We were psyching yeah. ourselves outside. We saw Sam was like, in the mirror saying that he was a strong, independent man. <laughs> like, we've got this. We have this. And as we're outside, a truck comes past <laughs> and a guy leans out and goes, Pete Wicks, I fucking love you. And he turns around and goes, 
Not sure about your mate, though. No, I mean, no he's really. He's a bit of a prick. Oh, bless you. Like, but you're no. such an unlikely couple. That's what I love about it. We are not a couple. I just want to put that out and there. Well, it looks like it. No, it, it you it, couldn't it, get closer right now. Okay. You're so squeezed I couldn't be that. further away <laughs> from Sam. You're if I quite moist as well. You're sweating quite a lot. Oh, my I, God. Really, I've got one wearing knitwear. Yeah, it, it is. It's hot, yeah. He looks like a Boy Scout today, doesn't he? I do like the neckerchief. It's oh, very thank cute. you, Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate it. That. Yeah. I like that. And the way you jangle when you move. Yeah, thank you. Like a jailer. We wouldn't lose you. No, you wouldn't. It's like a cat with a bell its neck. <laughs> Where's Pete? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so look, we're gonna we're gonna start. We're not gonna do the what we normally do, which is the whole staying relevant uh, caper, because mm. I don't think um, I don't think you really need that. You're evidently quite relevant oh, that's very at nice the minute. Thing. You are probably the UK's most loved sports broadcaster. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Yes, mm. for a number of reasons. Oh. Why do you think that is? Um, oh. Do you think it's because you don't look like Ellie McCoyst? <laughs> Hey, Ali McCoy's, by the way, back in his day. I just did a by the way, by the way. Um, <laughs> back in the day, my God, did you see him? Have you seen him? Yeah. He's a good looking man. I caught Ali in the wrong decade. Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, you caught him in the right decade. Do you a know wrong why? Century. Because he's like, he's now like the dad that everyone loves. He is, isn't he? Yeah. And every time, I have to explain it, he's not on Twitter. Every time he picks up a microphone, for any game on whatever channel, he trends number one. And I always explain it and he goes, oh, that's great. What does that mean? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like you. It's like that great. Is it is. Um, yeah, you've become like the, quite an iconic duo, really, haven't you? Mm. Um, everyone loves you both. I think that the, if I really look at why I'm, I'm doing all right, I think it's probably humble. because... <laughs> Smashing the fucking life out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be sitting there if I were you, but not, I'm killing it. <laughs> Sam does that and he's not. <laughs> really? yeah. yeah, but you've got to build yourself up, haven't you? Absolutely. If you believe it, everyone else believes so it. So carry on. What no one said. believes it. Fake it till you make it. Um, I genuinely think talk sport, like you might find this with podcasts, you know when you just get time to like talk and breathe yeah. and then being yourself comes really natural. And then I think people listen and they like to get to know you and they feel like they do know you. And that's the best way. I honestly think that. Like with TV, it's really hard because you get like three minute segments. Yeah. And when you're presenting or reporting, you can't really have an opinion or much of a personality. Whereas radio is like, go on, say what you want. And it's great. Did you get put together uh, by someone else? How did, the, how did that we so when I got the job on Talksport, I was literally doing these half an hour sections, reviewing the newspapers for 30 pounds. I remember my agent Those sent quid. yeah my agent sent what, it through. A minute? No, like it was about five or six years ago. That's my so agent cool. sent it through because I was like, I really want to get on Talksport. I just love it, and um, I was obsessed with Alan Brazil, not in like a creepy way or anything like that, um, <laughs> but I was obsessed with him. And um, I was like, I've just got like any chance, and they basically got me a demo, and I went on. And what you do is you pick up a newspaper you um, regurgitate the information in a bite-sized form on the radio. I go, this is what the papers are saying, blah, blah, blah. And um, I did my demo, it went really well, and they brought me in. And they uh, sent the, my message from my agent, was like, um, it's 30 quid. And I went, do you mean 300? And uh, he was like, no, 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 I mean 30. And I went, don't worry about it. I was like, and he went, I won't take commission. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> why? That's nice Would you want yeah, to? Thanks, thanks That's for nice that, thing. yeah. Yeah, if someone's <laughs> taking 20% or 30 quid, they're left with 24 <laughs> <Yeah>. pounds. <laughs> but I think I was on the end of that era of like newspaper reviews where it was 30 quid. But I didn't care. I would have done it for free. I was just, I was so happy to be there. And then Ali and Alan was like the best duo to work with. Yeah. Because they're just amazing, aren't they? And then I remember the day that... Um, I got offered the job, everyone would obviously be like, the breakfast show is the best show and it's exciting and everything. And I knew what it was gonna do. I knew it was gonna become like big and um, I was gonna get a lot of focus for it. But um, I was really upset because I was like, but I won't get to work with Alan. So mm. Alan normally does Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday. I do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which means we're now on opposite shifts. And it was so weird to me, it was like, it was so bittersweet. I thought, great, I'm gonna take it. And I remember when I took the job and day one of it was lockdown. So there was no sport to talk about. Oh. So like, I couldn't have, honestly, it couldn't have been day. So how did you feel harder. in gaps then? Quizzes, honestly, we joke about it. Yes. We had fucking quizzes about quizzes. We just, we talked absolute bollocks, but it was fun. And I think the thing is like, people were all at home. So actually they just wanted something to listen to. Yeah. But um, it was hard. It was like Sunday, and it's a four hour show. So you're up at six, and your guests aren't with you because of COVID. So they were like, one was in Scotland, um, Freddie Flintoff was in Manchester, and there was a delay. So you know, like, oh, <laughs> you know, like when you, when you yeah. think you've made a great joke, 
and then you wait for someone to laugh and there's nothing. And then you overcompensate by <laughs> like laughing at your own joke. And it's just, it was so it dire. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam's got a, um, a fake laugh. Oh, that fuck he does. off. No, I what don't. What is it? Go no, on, no, do, no, it. do it. Do it, do it. Do it. Fake laugh. So when Sam makes a joke, and it doesn't quite hit. You know one of them things, like, and actually it happened the other week. So um, you're out somewhere and Sam quietens a table around him because he thinks he's got this fucking banger, right? <laughs> And then he says the joke and it doesn't quite hit. So he laughs for everyone. <laughs> do, do the big laugh. I've got, I don't know. My laugh's like. <laughs> oh my God. He, he literally does that. And then everyone sort of goes. <laughs> this happened <laughs> once when we were just away in Austria. I know what we're fucking talking about. I know what he's doing. We were out on a table. We were out with a, with a client. When we were around a table with loads of people who had booked us for this job, there was like, I don't know, 10 people around the table. And I thought I had something funny to say. So I did, I hushed the table. I had the table as well. You know when you have a table and you're like this? Because you repeatedly asked for the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was because I knew I had something good to <laughs> I say. I need the table. Yeah. Yeah, and literally. then the pressure's on, you're like... Then you Shit. panic. And that's exactly what happened. I like, full-blown panic. And then Pete makes it so much fucking worse. And then Pete went, you've lost the table. <laughs> and then at that and point... And he just carried on a conversation. You can't fucking regain it once you've lost it like that. So when you started TalkSport then, had you... Because didn't you start doing darts? Yeah. Are you a darts fan? Yeah. I can't spake. I can't spake. I can't spake. How good was that? That's like one of the best So good. Ever I fucking love sport. darts. Do you really? Yeah, Have I really do. Have you ever been do. to Ali Pali? Yeah, I've been a couple of times and it's the fucking... No, I didn't dress up. Oh, no. Well, I just... I mean, I normally look like my fancy dress anyway. I was going to say a pirate. But, thing. yeah, it's... Um, I love... Have you ever been to Ali Pali? No, it's we another thing that I just oh, like... It's so good. Shall we all go? <gasps> uh, it would be fucking like, sick. honestly, yeah. in December. Is it still good, though? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Why, why? What do you think? Well, because I, I feel like it used to be really, really fucking good, and now it's a bit, it's a bit more tame, isn't it? COVID killed it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Why? It's all coming back up because like you couldn't have any fans. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> but it was a bit difficult. Should have known that. But, like, um, it, but it did. It got. It got. Like I'm not working on it anymore, so I can actually go and have a good time. So we should go. Yeah. Like, should we like? Thing is, no, we can't say things. No, no, you're not no. Stick I'm, to, though. I mean it. Like I genuinely, I say what I mean. Let's do it. She 100 percent does. But we have to dress up. We have to all dress. I would. Well, what I would. What else are you going to dress up as? Hey, yeah. I nearly sat on you when I came in. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Well, that fuck me. is brilliant. Hey, you got to <laughs> get in line. Carol Vorderman's first. Oh, she's great, isn't she? Um, God, Pete and Carol. That sounds like Pete and Carol. <laughs> they sound, they the sound... oldest couple you've ever. <laughs> That's like Ruth and fucking Eamon. <laughs> on the sofa with um, Pete yeah, with and Pete and Carol. Carol. Carl, that would be fucking. That would be... <laughs> that that's the kind of thing where you're getting annoyed that someone's trees growing over, growing over the fence, <laughs> <laughs> and you make a complaint to the council. I was fucking Pete and Carol again. Yeah, Jesus Christ. My party. The worst next door neighbours. Um, all right, well let's do that. Can you play darts? Uh, I've tried a lot. I'm really bad, but it's fun though. When you it have is. a couple, you get better. Yeah, yeah. really good. But there's a really good place in London that's called Flight Club that oh, you yeah, should go to. Should we You've do been. that first? That can be like the test. Let's the test. We'll do yeah. a warning. Sometimes Maybe people get weird when Pete's around. He's actually not that fun. But like, oh, yeah. Really? You've got to dip your toe in, decide whether you well, you want to hang with you it. You don't have to dip your toe in. Oh, There's yeah. no need to put anything inside of it. That, that's... <laughs> I've got a question that was like the first question I, I wanted to ask you when I used to listen to you, used to, always listen oh, to God. you. <laughs> when did you, because you've obviously known from a really young age that you wanted to be in sports broadcasting, right? Like, I feel like that's quite left field, isn't it? Like, when was the first time you knew? Because it was like super young, wasn't it? I think like I, I really wanted to do Blue Peter and um, I wanted to be a press back. Look, he's so, his opinion of me changed immediately there. He was like, oh, you're, you're, you're not cool. You wanted the badge? <laughs> wow. I did want a badge, yeah. Um, and I, wanted, I applied to be a press packer for News Round, and I never got anything back. And that was my first early rejection. Um, but I, I kind of like, I was always sporty. I got brothers and stuff like that, and that was what I loved. You used to play rugby, right? huh? I did, yeah. Wait, what position? Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I reckon I know what it is. Do you? Um, yeah, and um, this, this is gonna sound really bad, but um, did you used to be a hooker? I was a hooker. I was a hooker too! Hey. I was a fucking hooker, I was gonna say it! I was a hooker! I think probably <laughs> different types. Yeah, no, I'm a hooker! I was a hooker from a young age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. Was, yeah. yeah, how many yeah. times you heard that joke? A million times? <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I watched something this great. week about that. Yeah, um, yeah. You're trying to make people guess what? <laughs> Um, <laughs> front row. Do, do you know what? Do you know what's interesting? So they always go for like the slightly more petite person to be the hooker. Yeah. You because you've got to latch yourself body. round and then you get your foot in, you bring it in. Hook I used it. to play on the wing. Did you? You are the yeah. slowest person I've ever seen in my life. Is that a joke? No, you are so you're flat footed, mate. <laughs> oh, no. You're flat footed. But I'm fucking solid. <laughs> Yeah, that means you'd be a prop. No, I was like Jonah Lomu, just really small. Oh. <laughs> just tiny. Just like really a mini tiny. Jonah Lomu. Yeah, like a really, Battering. really hairy, small Jonah Lomu. <laughs> just, yeah. Do you know it's a little bit like that little dwarf from Lord of the Rings, just quite solid, but quite close Gimli. to the ground. Oh, no, the one. Yeah, Gimli. Gimli. Yeah, what's nice, it called? Gimli. Sun of glowing. Um, 
So you've always been, because your mum was a rugby coach, yeah? Yeah, so she was our coach. So she basically took us all to the rugby club as a way of like, we'd all, um, like we basically moved into a new neighborhood and she wanted to integrate us and she was on her own. So she was like, how do I keep all these kids together and like happy and concentrated? So she took us to the rugby club. It was amazing. It was the best thing she ever did for us. So what would you say is your first love when it comes to sports? Is it football? Yeah. So have you played football? Uh, yeah, but not very well. No? Not to a very high standard at all. And I mean, not to any standard. Well, some sort of standard. Do you play a bit of power league? Uh, no. What's power league? You won't take me. <laughs> You know, five How do like you that? not play that fucking power oh, league? Play. I imagine you and all your fucking mates playing, you know. We play like six a side. Five a side. <laughs> That's basically yeah. five or really? six a side. Yeah. Is, is oh, right. Imagine the butler drops you all off. Fuck off. No, see, we're not going to go with this. There's did you no butler. butler. Did you no. know when you were younger? No, I didn't. Did you really not? Just no pair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, again, Arsenal fan, right? Mm. And... I think you, like, that generation, so it's my generation, right? Mm. Arsenal were doing really well back then. Yeah. And so basically what you're saying is you're a glory supporter. Because yeah, they were was doing the really, really, really well. That fucking set you yeah, up, they were doing really well. And you went, I like a bit of them. I'm going to support them. And then they did yeah. shit for ages. And you're like, oh, Because no. being from Dagenham, Romford, the fucking Nam, mm -hmm. surely you should be West Ham. I know I should be, but my whole family are Arsenal. That's where it comes from. Uh. So like, my granddad was North London, lived next door to Highbury, used to go all the time. So that's where it's built. My dad's Geordie. Really? Yeah, he's a Geordie. So we kind of like, well, we were never Geordies. Like we were never even a little bit. But I have like a little bit of affection, especially now they've been bought and they're going to win things. Oh, right. Well, yes, you're 100% <laughs> oh, just like, a Glory. So yeah, great. absolutely like, love Arsenal. it. Arsenal, yeah. But, I, but we were so blessed when we were little. We met them when we were really young, like 98, 99, that kind of era, when they did the double. Yeah. That was, we actually met them completely by accident. My dad went to a, um, he was playing cricket next to London Colney, which was their old training ground where Watford are now. And me and the boys, my big brothers, we were like walking around. And we jet, this is honestly what happened. There was like a, um, what's it called? Just a load of bushes in a line. What's that called? Bushes in a row. A hedge? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. There was a hedge and we wandered through the hedge and Arsene Wenger was there and then the whole Arsene wow. team was amazing. So who is your all time? Uh, Ray Parler. You knew well. Zach, he's on Talk Sport. No, because he's from Romford as well. I just loved him when I was younger. But I could list, honestly, I've got so many. And it depends it's what mood I'm Romford in. Pelle, isn't it? Like, yeah, exactly. David Seaman. And we actually, like, not at the same time, but we lived on the same road. Do you know what I thought was really cool? <clears throat> um, and I imagine this is probably your inner fan coming out a little bit. It's when we saw all the Arsenal players and they were just signing, not looking at the, not looking at the kids. Yeah. You called them out on Twitter and it went viral, mate. Yeah. I loved that. Did like, you? on a personal thing, because... You're a fan first and foremost, right? Mm. And there's so so many sides to the story, right? Because it's literally just like, look, yeah. they probably do a million other things, right? And they're probably just, mm. you know, it's just one of the many. They probably gave that mascot, you probably know more than I do, but they probably gave that mascot, mascot like loads of other attention yeah. somewhere else. But it's like, as a fan, I was a kid. I, I was a kid once. And I went to Stamford Bridge and I went and met all the players and Did stuff. You? And they came, all of them came up to me and they were like asking me how I was and stuff like that. And I remember Did it Daddy so well. Daddy sort out a private session. Daddy didn't sort out a private <laughs> session, no. And I just, <laughs> yeah, I was a mascot. Well, you could probably pay for you to be part of the first. I don't actually know how I got it. In so maybe you right did. Now. But like, it's so, it's, do you feel like it was the inner fan from you that was like, ah, oh, do you know what, that stings a little bit? It's really difficult. Um, talk sport is because I'm an Arsenal fan everything you say about Arsenal clipped up, put on social media. Mm. And sometimes I'm like, please don't put it out because- Does everyone accuse people, you of bias? Yeah, they? and yeah. people who don't listen to the show and only see clips, they're like, oh, all she does is ever talk about Arsenal. And also I don't really feel that qualified. <laughs> I'm not a pundit. And all of a sudden your words have all this weight. And I'm like, oh my God, like I, this isn't, I'm, I, there's such a big responsibility. When that happened, I text the, the press officer, Dan, as soon as it happened, because I watched it and I was like, that doesn't look good, does it? Yeah. And I think the club probably made a bit of a mistake putting it out. Putting that out because, there, yeah. But I think they thought, oh, look, they've all stopped and signed Didn't the even shirt. even look at her. Aren't they doing a great yeah. thing? And then no one noticed the eye contact and she's looking like this. So I was like, do I... I anyway, I asked the club and I said, what was that? And he went, look, it was a part of a big day. Like, she met them, she walked out in the tunnel with them onto the pitch. They're, they're called junior gunners and they have an amazing experience. Yeah. So that's one isolated incident. And also they're in game mode. So yeah, maybe they, you know, they're not really focused. They're just going straight in pre-match. So anyway, I, I went on and I said it, but I was like, let's be honest. There's a little girl standing in front of you, like, little bit of eye contact because I looked at her and I was the same as you Sam I was like I've definitely been that kid before when you're like you're doe eyed you're and you're literally like oh for some my eye god or something, yeah some acknowledgement so I'm allowed to feel that but the amount of stick I got from Arsenal fans one of them said 
you're not a real Arsenal supporter. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, it's so annoying. And obviously it's kids, isn't it? Like yeah. 12 year old kids and stuff. But I did, I was annoyed by it. I was like, you have to be able to call things out. But I balanced it and I said like, but they don't watch the rest of the clip. I said, look, anyway, I contact the club, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I find stuff like that frustrating because you can't really win a is, lot of is, Social media is an absolute arsehole really for yeah. a number yeah. of fucking reasons. But you're in probably one of the most fickle industries in terms of yeah. what fans are like. Do you know what I mean? One week everyone, it's, it's one of them things, isn't it? With sports where everyone's got an opinion. Yeah. Twitter you know, as well yeah. is That's Twitter. It. But what you do, yeah. Twitter's the, because sport, sport Twitter, football Twitter is a tough place to be at the yeah. best of times, right? You have to and be quite thick skinned. You, you must do, right? Has that been hard to navigate at all? God, this is a proper interview, isn't it? I know. Know. I, this mate, is meant to be you joke. Need this, to use your cue card. This yeah. Is, this is well, that's because it's fuck all on them. Yeah. Um, we, it's just because it makes us look more professional. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does. Sam's like never it. actually looked at you. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what sort of stuff does it say? Well, it's I'll just ask really got. Minute, but what does it say? Um, you've spoken a lot about trolling recently. Can we touch on that? <laughs> Um, uh, who are your icons? And you've got that. This, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, yeah. It's just I, in case I you like... were really fucking boring, basically. <laughs> we just need things to fall back on in case you were proper shit. I genuinely, you know, you said earlier on about like what makes um, what makes a sports broadcaster like a popular one. Yeah. yeah. I honestly think if you can understand like the culture of football and social media and how the two go together, football, Twitter. If you really understand that, and sometimes I don't, but if you can kind of um, navigate that and the way that I did it from like years and years ago when I first started getting any kind of notoriety was to give as good as I get. And some broadcasters And you don't do that, that, by the yeah. way. Yeah, some broadcasters, no one's ever said to me, take that down. So some people will, like I've replied a couple of times about people's manhood and things like that, but it's only ever a retaliation. And I never understand when people go, oh, you can't say that. I'm like, what am I, am I a sitting duck? I'm yeah. supposed, just mm. because I'm a broadcaster, you're allowed to say anything you want about me. And as soon as I reply, and I will win, like I'm very, like, I'm very um, stubborn about things like that. And that's like a negative for me, I think. I will, I will fucking fight to the death, yeah. right? And I will win. And then they're like, oh, you can't say that because you're... And I'm like, oh, fuck off. You started it. You Exactly, you started it. How annoying it. is it, man? It's so frustrating. See, Pete's really good at that. So I'll get in, like, sometimes getting a couple of Twitter spats. No, 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 no. Hold on, there's a difference. I um, I don't lose arguments, <laughs> ever. I just he don't chins them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. No, he bottles them. But I, I don't see the point when it comes to social media... Um, I, I, I listen, I'm, I'm quite happy, people, and it happens quite a lot of people fucking slagging me off and whatever, but it, do, it mm. doesn't bother me what fucking, you know, Danny and Doncaster thinks. <laughs> but yeah, that does, it doesn't bother me. It bothers me more if someone says something to my face, but no one ever does. No one really says anything to your face, okay. do they? When they do it over Instagram and fucking Twitter and all that, it really doesn't bother me because I just mm. think, oh, fuck off. You, it really riles you. Yeah. And then Sam, what Sam does is then he calls me and goes, I'm going to have to say thank. Why? Yeah. I like Why? And then what happens is I oh. fuck it as well. And then yeah. I fuck it. And then I call Pete again because and go, I fucked it. What do I do? Because if you're going to do that, and, and, and I've always been, listen, you can't argue with an idiot. If you're going to do it, you've got to go in. You've have. If you you've got to go in and you've got to persevere. You and you've got to kill. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right? 100%. Kill I shoot shot. to wound. Yeah. That's the problem. If you if there's a typo, you're fucked. You delete it. You yeah. block them. You, you come off Twitter for five days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam, I love that. that. You go half arse because you do it emotionally. <laughs> right? You like can't shake. do it emotionally. Yeah. You need to think logically, tactically and think, I'm going to fuck you up. That's what you've got to do. <laughs> you're a bit emotional about it. I did that back in the day. I actually, my mum is really good at proofreading. So she used to proofread all of my work when I was a kid. Please tell me your mum proofreaded your tweets. I sent her a tweet. This was like <laughs> fuck off, you slimy bitch. Have I still slimy, right, mum? Yeah. <laughs> Where someone said something along the lines of "Get back in the kitchen." It's the most boring. Oh, that's um, a shit boring one. one. Yeah. And I was like. I fucking will get back in the kitchen that I own, in the house that I bought, yeah. from the job where I earn money. And anyway, I wrote this whole thing and I sent it to my mum. I was like, can you just proofread that for me? And there was a typo in it. You need <laughs> a semicolon in like there you. somewhere. Yeah, exactly. She's like, that needs a comma. <laughs> um, so in terms of what you do now then, um, and where you've been, you started as a runner, Sky Sports. Mm. Oh, you have done your homework. We've done proper research. Wow. Have we? Well, no, I didn't need to because I'm at, like I know a lot about you anyway. Yeah, um, and then obviously to darts, talk sport, and, and and now you do a range of different sports. You're a big boxing fan as well. Yeah, um, we've got to bring it up. 
You know what we're going to say. <laughs> I know you're going to yeah, say. Seven well, foot tall, beautiful human being. Fucking what a beautiful man. He definitely wanted a bit of woodsy. Oh, God. I'm so glad that you've brought this up because I haven't actually had the space to, like, explain what happened. Well, yeah, this is why we thought we'd, we'd give yeah. you an opportunity. I tried it... to do it on TalkSport, but like, Ali wouldn't let me get in a word in Edgeways. And, like, and, and Sam was in there as well, so it was, like, really... The cool. table's yours. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Do you know what? And you won't <laughs> lose the table either. <laughs> Thank you. Potentially. I you... hope not. So just to, like, <laughs> just to explain what happened... My job for DAZN ends when the show ends, right? So we've done it. We're all finished. We've got, you know, Frank Smith. Like, yeah. I've worked with those guys since since 2009, since we were babies. So we're all great friends. So we go in, like, there's, like, a secret room in the O2. But, like, we go in there, we have a drink. Not the little secret, secret room. We go into, like, the normal room and have a drink. And that's where all the performers, like, Oli Murs, I've been in there before to meet him after show. He's lovely, by the way. Yeah, he's great. I know Oli, yeah. So wonderful. Yeah. So, um... We were in there having some drinks and champagne. And after I finish a show, you guys must be a little bit like this. After you do something like, you know, you're really buzzy yeah. and you're hyper. I don't often get buzzy. And they're going, of course not. No, because you're kind of like mellow constantly, aren't you? Yeah, I definitely Mono. get it. Yeah. yeah. So you get it, right? So you're really hyper. I sometimes go for a walk afterwards if I've done something yeah, like, so that I love. Yeah, energy. So, um... I'm also a lightweight, so like we've had a couple of glasses of champagne, it's gone straight to my head. I've taken my shoes off, they hurt. I'm leaving, it's 2 a.m. in the morning, right? And Freddie, who is um, Anthony Joshua's uh, like commercial officer, but also that like, he's just been there since the beginning. Um, Freddie's like in there and I'm like, I'm gonna pop my head in and say hi and bye. So I go in, I literally knock on the door, pop my head in. I think it's gonna be really quiet in there. There's like 30 people in there. So pop my head in the door. I go, well done, <laughs> well done, good, good fight, well yeah. done. Um, and the first thing he, he says is, oh, he went, oh, Ruben. And I went, oh, Loftus No, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was my second question yeah. after the Anthony Joshua one. Well, it's like ugh, such a complicated, it, basically on TalkSport the week before, on that Monday, one of the headlines, because anyone at TalkSport, anything to do with anything like that, were like, great opportunity to talk about sex, basically. So it was like, someone had asked um, Anthony Joshua, who was dream daters, and he said Beyonce. So we were like, brilliant, let's do our dream dates. And let's all try and get a date off the back of it, right? So I was like, Leo Suter is this actor. Oh my God, he's amazing. I was like, brilliant, I'm gonna say him. Ali said Claudia Schiffer or someone like that, some sort of model. Anyway, so then like, that then became a thing. Then the next thing after that show, I had to do a pre-recorded interview with Ruben Loftus-Cheek. So at the end of it, we're like, let's just carry on. Who's your dream date? Ruben goes, Laura Woods. And I was like, good God. <laughs> like, okay. He's a beautiful man. Ruben is probably the best looking player in yeah. the Premier League. He's a very good looking I would lad. Say. So I was like, don't mind that at all. That can stay in. Excellent. It will keep that. Yeah, we'll keep that and we'll frame it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote for my wall. So anyway, so I was having a great week. So then like, <laughs> I walk into... Uh, and you know what happens, all the headlines get made out of it, which is really funny. Um, and excellent to have an association with someone who looks like he's carved by yeah, Jesus. absolutely. So um, I go into the room, blah, 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 say hi. And he goes, oh, um, Ruben. And I went, oh, I said, yeah, that actually came from you saying, Beyonce's your dream date. And he went, no, no, you're my dream date. And I was like, is anyone filming this? I was like, ha has anyone else yeah. heard this just happen? I've got no shoes on because they hurt. Nice feet then. Thanks. Well, no, I'm just wondering. That is like, the creepiest you got nice... fucking thing. I'm, I'm saying it's a question. Did you have nice feet then? Nice feet obviously... then. <laughs> well, it's quite a big oh, thing, isn't it? Oh, my. You're doing a me. I well, didn't it, know if it was it... a question or a statement. It's yeah. a question. Nice feet then. You must have nice feet. And then feet I then. looked at your feet. Yeah, like, yeah I can't, we can't see her feet now, can we? She hasn't taken her shoes off now. I'll well, take mine off if you time. want me to. Fuck no, because your feet are like fucking hobbits. Okay. <laughs> every time I have no shoes on in a photo, the amount of people that say I've got boat feet, what are they? Yes. They're a size seven, which is a UK average for a woman, by oh. the way. Is and it? Like, How big are your fucking boats? And I'm like, they're not that, but like my slabs. Yeah, you could water ski without, without skis. And have to work, <laughs> is that what we're saying? Yeah, I could yeah. navigate that. Cut the fucking canoes. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> um, so anyway. no, what I meant by that, if someone says you're a dream date whilst your feet are out, because that's quite a big thing. People have got a big thing about it. I don't, like, I don't like feet. Yeah, but I don't suppose someone looks straight at your feet when you walk in the room. If you, well, if you haven't got any shoes on, I imagine they probably do. Like, why the fuck has she got no shoes on? Yeah, maybe you did. I don't know. Anyway, so. Um, Coogan, who's from um, IFL TV, his YouTube um, channel, and they're really good for boxing. He's about to do an interview with Anthony Joshua, and we're just chatting, and he's like, oh, for God's sake, you might as well do it yourself. And I was like, all right, cool. So at the time, I'm thinking it's just a joke. Like, we're just sitting down. So I give him a cuddle, and I sit next to him, which is why we're so close. Um, and also, we've got one mic and camera shot and all that sort of stuff. And there's, like, enough space, and everyone's going, where were your shoes, and why are you sat so close? 
anyway, we start doing the interview and it's just silly. And we're both obviously, he's high from a fight. I'm a couple of glasses of champagne down. <laughs> And it was just meant to be a silly interview. And you just kissed. And, then and it was like, <laughs> one thing led to another. Yeah, there you um, go. And now we're engaged. No. <laughs> so anyway, it then became an, like, quite an interesting interview because he just he just said what he felt and it was nice. Well, it's quite relaxed, isn't it? Because yeah. normally, normally when you do interview, I mean, I'm saying this like I do them, mm. but I imagine when you normally do interviews and all that, it's very much uh, people are very press orientated. They're yeah. very media savvy on terms of what they yeah. say. And actually, you don't really get to see what people are like. Because like that, but actually... Yeah. I have interviewed him. Did you oh, you have him. Yeah, and he's yeah. punched me. No. Yeah, he gave me an uppercut. Well, that explains oh my that. God. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. With the fucking hands, wow. mate. I fell over. No. Yeah, he's no, 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 no. He's got some hit, and he said he was giving me seventy percent power, and I believe him. Like he, he, he gave me a proper uppercut <laughs> on the thing, and I, and and I, and I went over. Like a turtle on your back. It was, it was 20%. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, there's no way, there's no way you got 70% of He hit me, Joshua. and I'm literally like that, on my back like that. And he's like... And like what did I, he hit you with? I've gone down like that. Fucking <laughs> you know, son. Mate, and I'm what literally... And I'm and I'm looking up at the ceiling, and I'm like, I don't know what just hit. It's like a train going through you. Well, oh. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> He, he's like, he's built. I've never seen anyone so built before like that in my entire life. Um, so so what, I'm, what I meant by before you started talking about the, the pattern of passion with Auntie Joshua um, <laughs> is that when you're in it, because people are so media savvy, it's normally the same sort of questions, the same sort of crap. And actually, when you see him on, uh, you know, when he does League of Their Own or them other sort of yeah. things, he's quite a funny guy. Like, he's got quite a bit of like, banter about him, but you never really see that side. So actually, it's probably quite a nice time to interview someone when they're relaxed and, yeah. do you know what I mean? No I shoes. Maybe you should try that when you interview people. Fuck off. No, just take, take your shoes, shoes off, off just whack them up. Gonna be honest with you, I'm quite a high class interviewer now. Um, you know, fucking not, not based on this, you know, so fucking no, no, say professional. I listen, I listen to your podcast. Oh, he didn't mean mean that. He's got he's got a proper job. Are you hungry? Do you want to get some lunch? No, no. <laughs> what's what's going know. on there? <laughs> well, but, but, I didn't know where that was in... going. I was like, fucking hell, that was so left wing. I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> you got nice feet. <laughs> like I say, really, yeah. There you go. That's normally how it goes. It's normally the question <laughs> after. Nice feet. Because you're cheering a thing, isn't it? Sorry. ADHD. <laughs> so so no, I, I basically I, I've interviewed quite a few people before. So I do a radio show in this very building actually. Oh, and yeah. um, uh, no, was it hits or something? It's hits, yeah. You and find your research. Yes. I listen. I listen to your podcast. I do. I listen to you talk about it. And so basically, I interviewed one of my first ones with Brad Pitt, oh. big one for a, for a first interview. And you know when someone's didn't just go well. yeah, it didn't go well. Yeah. But like you know, but it did go well. Yeah. But it did, it went well. He hurried you along. But, yeah, but it's not like he did hurry me along. I feel like you guys connected. But I tried to connect. I said he had a nice ring. <laughs> it was gold. <laughs> and he literally had it. And I said a to gold him, plated but you, ring. But you know when of you he does. But you know when you need to like. I felt some, I thought to myself because he's so cool. He was so relaxed. And I was like, I need to make this guy like chill out, right? So I, I was like, I'm gonna pay him a compliment. And I was like, I love you your ring, him Mr. Pitt. Yeah, I call him Mr. Pitt. But you, you, you can't call him Brad, I'm right? Mr. Pitt. Did you shake his hand? I did. I did shake it. I bowed. I bowed at him. <laughs> Yeah, which is weird. That was weird, to be fair. Wow. But yeah, it's fucking Brad Pitt. I hope you're picking up some tips here. I really am. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing it all wrong. I'm about, yeah, no, trust me. You need to follow my lead. And uh, and so so basically, long story short, I know what you mean in the interviewing game. Pete doesn't really understand, but like, no. I get it. Do you know what, actually, on the topic of, uh, of bowing and curtsying, I went to Cheltenham. Cheltenham's like one of my, yeah. other than the darts, the best place on earth. Yeah, do you go ladies there, gold cup? Uh, I actually go Tuesday, go Wednesday. Oh, do you? Yeah, because I've always got, it's usually FA Cup or something the weekend. Mm. So anyway, I went this year and my boss at ITV took me up to the Warner Box. He was like, would you like to? I was like, yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Like, I'm, I'm on my way. I saw this. Did you have this on your Instagram? Did you go with Zandy there? Who? And Carl Walker. Did you go to the no. races with him? No, I didn't. What no. was that that you went to? I don't know. Yeah, nice research, Pete. Yeah. Fucking hell, mate. I saw it on your Instagram. So, <laughs> you always like my pictures of anything. Ah! No, 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 wait, wait, I'm not wait, Oh my, wait, I'm not wait, Britt, I know where she's going with it. My Frenchie. Because I've got two. I know, the yeah. rescues. Yeah, both I rescues. I like the one with one eye. Peggy. Peggy. Yeah, pirate Peggy. Oh, pirate Peg. Yeah, I've got Eric and Peggy. Very cute. Thank so, you, darling. Anyway, well, I've got two up, cats. Up, like, no one cares. No, I've got two cats. Got... No, no, but they're ragged up. You're a cat person. No, I was always a dog person, but then my missus basically converted, she's a massive cat person. She converted me to cats, you see. Ragdoll's like the closest to a dog. They are, exactly, they're like dog cats. And they're amazing. Pete always says hello to them when he walks through the door, don't you? You force everyone to say hello to them when they walk no. through the door. You literally go into Sam's and you say, all right, Sam, all right, Zara. And then he won't do anything unless you go and find the cats around the house <laughs> and say hello to them. Like, I'm going to be on my hands and knees looking under fucking beds for the fucking cat. Going, come, they... on, come on, fucking, what's cat it called? Bunny? They live there too. What's its name? Albus Dumblepaw. 
<laughs> and, uh, and and just and just Cedric. Cedric. <laughs> yes. I like that even, as in another one from Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you like Harry Potter? No. no. Oh, oh thank <laughs> fuck oh, for that. I thought we were going to really grow out then. All respect for you then. I thought we were going to grow out. It's a bunch out. of kids on fucking broomsticks. Fuck off. <laughs> Me and Pete are going to play. We're going to play Quidditch together. She doesn't. We don't. No, yeah. No. Where you have brooms, no. you no, waddle. No, no, listen. Yeah. When I was a producer at Sky, I worked on a kids show and I went and did a feature on Quidditch. <sighs> Shut the front. Genuine door. people playing Quidditch. In What's it field. like? It's people sweeping apart. And I'm there. Yeah. And was, I'll be there. And they was they never broke character. It was so weird. And, it, and I was like, come on, let's have a look. Come on, you're playing Quidditch. And they were like, no. No, how dare you? Like, this is serious. I was like, how you be? Can't, you can't fly. Like, how do you actually? You waddle. Do you fake? Is it like WWE? And they were like, no, it's competitive. We did a whole series on it. Do you know what would be? Are you quite competitive? Mm. I'm really competitive, and I think, um, and actually, you are as well. I like to just be involved. Um, I th imagine going to play and just ended up in a fucking. That's what I want. Can you do it? I'll I find really. You it. If you could. Oh, well, uh, no, hold on, Laura. No, 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 there's babe. You're, you're not. You have to. You're not oh going to find us. Oh my god, I can see it now. Big guy. Excellent. Hold on, unless you're playing as well. <laughs> Listen, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, go yeah, darts? Yeah, yeah. yeah, listen, you could I'll don't, end up, don't I'll, just stick I'll a broomstick up my ass. You're gonna have to have one yourself. <laughs> all right, okay. we're, we're all fucking doing it. All right, if we all do it. No, there's another yeah. thing that I really. If we're going down that route, I want to go larping with Pete oh, as well. We've done all oh, this. Okay. Larping is basically where you have foam swords and spears and shit, and you like have battles. You've seen it, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and you have battles and, in parks. And you go, are you, do you meet each other? In yeah, the middle of the... mate. Yeah. That's what I want to do with Pete. Would you like to join yeah. that as well? Should we do like an extreme, but not really extreme sports? Well, it's not extreme, is it? It's going to be me kicking the fuck out of someone with a foam sword. You love that. Niche? I would love that. Niche sports series. Yes. No, shit sports this series. This is the best idea sports, ever. Yeah, yeah. This shit we could sports. get our TV break because she's on the way out, we're on the way yeah. down. So we can actually, we can ah. latch on. We can't be on the way down because we've never been, there's, there's, <laughs> there's no down. I can keep you relevant. Well, yeah, you can. But I think what you're doing is right, just explore everything. You've obviously wanted to be in this industry for a while, mm. yeah? Basically. Not our one, the sport one. <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah. no, no, the entertainment industry, but specifically around sports. Yeah based on the fact that you started as a runner mm. and then worked to being on camera and, you know, on radio and the rest journey. of it. Um, <laughs> Sam has also wanted to be part of this industry for a long time. I sort of fell into it and now there's, uh, you know, I can't get a normal job anymore. Mm. So um, how do we succeed? Oh, uh, the... <laughs> I, this I, is I know it's sound... a really hard question no, for no, a lot no, of people but... because we are so dog shit at it's, everything. No, it's going to sound really cringe, like genuinely. But like, I do, I do think like people. It's like I said at the beginning, people really appreciate authenticity. And I think the funny thing about you two is you kind of bring out each other's like authentic Fantastic. sides. <laughs> like that. You do though. You're so, so I, right. I think that I think that works. But people like you. But also, your audience will grow with you. Laura, I've got a question for you. Mm. Um, you do my dream job. Mm. How do I? get into sports because I went on match yeah. of the day X recently did you and um and I basically I'm, I'm, I'm actually a mad Chelsea fan like I I but really, you've got to be authentic and it won't al work. almost <laughs> too almost too much right and uh, I did this thing on match of the day X right and they're like they're like did a story frame and they're like right Samson's gonna say who would sell and keep on the Chelsea squad now we've had a shit season right so sell all of them. it was basically like between Mount and Sterling I was like that's tough I'd keep Mount I'd sell Sterling because he's done nothing right. and so I my picks by the way were fucking great mm. and I got hammered hammered what does this posh prick know about fucking yeah. football I got battered and I was like well I'm never doing that again you could have said everything right and you yeah. still got I know I said everything yeah. right but I think that's sports in general with a lot yeah, of things it, is. it doesn't matter what you say whether you're right or wrong you're going to have someone that's going to counter that argument regardless yeah uh, it's the same as most things you do in life not a lot of people but that's one of the nice things about sports in general though isn't it is the fact that there is that debate and there's that opinion. yeah but, I, that's why I'm not I so I love boxing mm. that would be my my favorite sport with it yeah um but i cannot discuss it with people and i cannot go and watch things with people because i, I have to win arguments and i get too frustrated with the fact i just think shut the fuck up you don't know what you're talking <laughs> about and that's the same reason why i couldn't do what you do with fucking football regardless of whether you know every fucking thing i know everything. about a team or every <laughs> whatever it may be about a sport you're gonna have some fucking two bob numpty oh you know I used to be with the chelsea academy but until i did my acl <laughs> fuck off dickhead but he's gonna disagree with what you're saying anyway just to be a fucking knob, yeah. and I can't handle that because I'd end up fucking, I'd end up inside. Do you, do you like again? Do you like Mark Goldbridge? Yeah, I really. Do. I fucking love, love him. him. Yeah, he basically just fun. he just loved Man United, <laughs> dropped it, and was like, he says it every fucking week. I don't have a fucking trust man. And he, <laughs> and he, and he, but, but he literally was like, he, and he pursued something he loved, right? And he now has the biggest mm. fan account on YouTube. 
yeah. to do with Man United. And and people slag him off for it. And it's like, I think there's, oh, do you think we're running out of, you're not even allowed to be a fan anymore. Yeah. It's like you have to have played the game. But yeah. if you think about it, and similarly probably with what you do on uh, Twitter. Honestly, sport, Laura's thoughts on that. But. Having, having an opinion. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that having an opinion is actually what people like. So regardless whether people disagree with him or disagree with you, that's what gets people talking. And yeah. actually in that industry, that's exactly what you want, is you want people to be talking, to be interested. Yeah, he's right, actually. That's what TalkSport is based on. Yeah. You don't want it, like, the worst thing you can do on TalkSport is not have an opinion. Sitting on the fence. Because we won't use you yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, otherwise yeah. you're like, yeah, no, the only person that's allowed to sit on the fence is Ali. And even that, sometimes I'm like, Come on, Ali. Like, get yeah. off the fence. He's the only one that we will allow. That's why Jamie's so great and Gabby's so great. Jamie's unreal. It doesn't matter. Like, they're O'Hara. giving you... Yeah. I texted well, I know Jamie. I, I know Jamie really Jamie. well. Mate, I texted him when I wanted to rant about Chelsea because he was live and I was listening in my you kitchen as I do. And I went, mate, let get me in. And he was like, all right, call this number. And then I missed his message back. No. I missed my opportunity. You yeah. got to go. I had to go on the other night. Well, I didn't have to, but I went on when Arsenal lost to City. got back. How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, heartbroken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did, <laughs> you, what did you do? Um, I actually I went to the pub to watch it in the city with my brother and my cousins and I couldn't drink and I ended up taking my brother back to his house in Rygate and driving home and on the way home I called into the sports bar. God, that's sad, isn't it? That's fucking jokes. What a sad life. No, a not sad a sad life. What a sad Jane. little life, Jane. What a sad little life. Not at all. What an amazing life. That's what I do. I literally, my missus isn't allowed to talk to me for about an hour afterwards. You know when people say, like when you're chatting to people and they're like, so what music do you like? And I'm like... I just listen to talks for all day. It's so sad. I'm doing <laughs> it now. So ridiculous, I, isn't I'm it? thirsty and still going strong, <laughs> mate. I fucking love it. But I really think there is, there's, you're losing the place of the fan at the mm. moment. And I think everyone thinks they're a fucking professional and it's so yeah. annoying. Yeah. But Mark, God, but to go back to Mark, um, there is the most amazing clip. I think it's Burnley he's talking about and he's doing like a live watch along and he's basically slagging Burnley saying, oh, Burnley aren't offering anything. And then they score and the timing of it is absolutely perfect. And he's not... Any, he's like, anyone but bloody Burnley. And it's uh, sometimes when I'm just, you know, when you get yourself caught in a rabbit hole in yeah, YouTube, yeah. sometimes I'll just go and search So do for I. It. Have you seen the one where he goes, oh no, oh no. <laughs> so, did you watch the 7 0? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, mate, it's the city so one. But I, yeah, but the thing is about him as well is he actually, I really, I do respect all of his views. So do I. I'm the same as you. You, you don't have to be an expert. Like, Talksport is genuinely, we're like our tagline is it's about the fans and all that sort of stuff. We have callers coming on, right? So I want to hear their opinion. So why wouldn't I want to hear a YouTuber's opinion? There's such a there's such a kind of um what's the word? A stigma. There's such mm. a stigma against YouTubers. Yeah, right? I because, hate it. Because oh, they're only a YouTuber. I'm like, oh, sorry, like just because they got out of bed and they figured out a way to make their own revenue. <gasps> so that if, for example, they then make it onto telly and then they're not popular next week. That's all right. I'll just fall back onto my own channel where I created my own audience. I, that's what I like the most. I like the way Goldbridge like goes head to head with like the Rios of the world, the Garys of the world, and he gets the interaction. Like they do reply, and he has like whether he's right or wrong. I just think what he's done is he's a is fan. Excellent. Yeah, we have him on our show in the morning. I no. Love oh yeah, you do, don't yeah, you? Like once a week or something like that, we'll have him on, and I and I look forward to that section. Do you know what I look forward to? I'm really really sorry. This to do with you. Um, you know, you said your celebrity crush. Yeah. You know, it's the guy from Vikings. I love mm. Vikings. Um, no know. idea. He looks Who like, is it? He looks, like, looks like you. Yeah. Oh, we well, do. I very much doubt he looks like me. He looks. Yeah, I don't look What's like the name a Viking, again? do I? Leo. I can't say. Oh. The smallest Viking Leo in the world. Suter. Well, I look like the Viking fucking toy figurine. Would you ever, like, who do you date? I'm not asking who you're dating, but, like, oh, who do you date? Because you're obviously in the public eye now. You're, like, a very big in the public eye. Like, do you worry about that? Do you ever sit there and go, oh, God, like, does it have to be someone from what I do? Or do I try and keep them away from the press quite, and all that shit? Or? It's really strange because I, I I wouldn't consider myself, like, I would say you guys are more high profile. So what you do and, and how, like, the newspapers would want to be attracted to the news story is probably more your kind of... Work, I doubt that. I doubt work. that very highly. Yeah. But... but I but I kind of like... You, there's some really weird people on social media, right? So I try and keep a lot of my private life very private. And especially like men, I, I try and keep that very yeah. private and away from... Like, I'm, I'm like, unless I'm going to marry the guy, 
then maybe off social media, no hard launch. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. And like, can you imagine that? You're like, oh, here's my new boyfriend, and the next week you break up. But well, we've all been there. We have. That's, <laughs> it, that's literally our lives. And I think when you get when you get burnt with stuff like that, because I'm exactly the same. That like, I don't. I, you get linked. I've been linked with so many different things over the years. Yeah. And you had a high profile relationship previously, didn't you? So yeah, yeah. So from that, it, it wasn't at the time. No, it wasn't. But then it became yeah. because of what you ended up doing. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and it yeah. became one of those things. And when then you have to go through that then now I don't put anything anywhere about that. So yeah. then a lot of the things, but then this week, do you know what I mean? Like you've got the fucking, I know it's a joke, the Carol Vorden stuff or you, Anthony Joshua. I don't care that people talk about things that aren't real. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean? It saying. really doesn't yeah. bother me. Like, because then actually it's not who you are and it's not your actual private life. If it was actually saying that it was your actual life, then you think, oh, fuck, mate. Yeah, then it you becomes do personal. More. Yeah. Does that make sense? That must suck, just like not like keeping things no, it's in the, the best shadows. things. The best things in life are the things that no one knows about. That's that's really true. Oh my God, that was Fucking that was deep, wasn't it? That's right. Deep. Poem, Pete. Shit. Private life's a happy life, man. Last question for you from me. Um, <laughs> you, you I don't want to put my hand up as well, but like, <laughs> That's honestly... you, um, <laughs> would you ever do anything like the jungle or strictly or anything like that? I know. I, I would never do strictly because I honestly. Too left feet. Yeah. And I. Well, too big left feet. I, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> big She's never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> size seven is UK average. Anyway, so yeah, I, I only dance when I'm really drunk and then I'm amazing. <laughs> what kind of dancing are we talking about? Pete has a dad dance. Oh, do you? I can't dance and I, I know I can't dance. Mm. And Sam Sam continually tries to make me dance, but I, I know I've seen I'm it. quite happy standing at the bar. Yeah, like, me too. That's, yeah, that's the I best place to be. Like he is a bartender. So Pete will literally... Oh, yeah. we, we, Weatherspoons. Oh, we were literally at, a, at an event. Really so we stood funny. by the bar, right? Arm on the bar, and he goes, Don't worry, mate, this is where I'll be. Like, uh, glued <laughs> to the fucking bar. And he, like fishing, he will literally be like, Mate, so do, you wanna, do you want to come out, Commissioner? Do you want to come over here? Yeah, Tequila? I don't Tequila. Say commissioner, do you want to yeah. come over here? <laughs> but, <laughs> without never, without <laughs> saying names, he's like, he's like Tequila, yeah. Tequila. What well, he doesn't realise is it's a fucking free bar. So he's basically just there <laughs> handing drinks to people that are already that sitting too. on the bar. That's so true. And that's his one thing. But then, then you true. have a job, and that's you. You feel like you've got your job for the night. Well, like, this no, no, no. This, this is how uh, Sam and I do things. Is when you go because it, it, similar to to you, um, like I said when I when I said to you about when I see you with uh, Ali McQuest at that whatever mm -hmm. it may be, and this week you've had the sports industry awards yeah, and, and all that sort night. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, we should have mentioned that. That's very what? good. I probably would. no, don't worry about it. Um, so um, when you we've got quite a social kind of life. Life. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like um, which is really fortunate. And like lucky are we yeah. to go do some 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 great stuff. Um Sam hates that stuff. Mm. I love that bit because that's the bit where you meet normal people and you actually see what people are like off camera. All the fucking bollocks. Like that's what I was trying to say about the Anthony Joshua thing. All that normal fucking press chat and all that crap. I couldn't give a and I'm terrible at it because I just don't care. But the bit where you get people's pissed is when you actually find out what people like. So mm. the way me and Sam do it is he does all the professional stuff and he's very good at all of that. And he does, you know, I interview Brad Pitt and all that. <laughs> I would have got Brad Pitt in fucking string feathers, but I would have done a terrible interview. But then you've had a great time. Turns into Who's a good interview. Here, well, yeah. exactly. Pete actually has a pair of slippers, uh, a custom okay, pair of string feathers like slippers. I know. I've, I've li I listened to podcasts with you, with your, um, co what is it again? Comb over on your toe. <laughs> so I came for your feet, so you're coming for mine. Oh, I see how it goes. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. All right. I'm just biding my time, by the way. Oh, I, I like what you're and, doing and there. You getting rejected for an interview with a celebrity? Who was it again? The A-list actor that was like Miles oh, Teller. No. Well, we were expecting bad, we were expecting you to reject us. Um, really? Yeah, I threw it out in the dark. I literally went, "I'm going to fucking damn Laura Woods." No, well, that's, that's so funny, isn't it? Because I genuinely would have thought that I was not high profile enough for your podcast. Now, do you know what? We go for people who we're actually interested by. So like, and because it, it's more fun that way. But also, we actually have like things to ask. And I think you're setting yourself a disservice there, based on the fact that genuinely, and I, I said it at the start of this, you're you're probably the most loved sports broadcaster in the UK by a long start. way, by a long way, and for for a number of reasons, because you know what you're talking about, you have fun with it. Um, personality wise, you're the bollocks, and a lot of geezers fancy you. <laughs> so there's there's a number of fucking <laughs> reasons. Do you know what I mean? Like, but but evidently you're really good at your job, and that's why we wanted you on. Talking about staying relevant as well, I don't think there's anyone better to get on. <laughs> because you are an a example of someone who's literally, you, you knew what you wanted to do, mm. Mm. became a runner, you went all the way through it, and now you're at the top of your fucking game, mate. So massive kudos. Thank you for coming on. We're a ma I'm a huge fan, and now, I mean, Pete loves your feet. I, and <laughs> there you go, really. I love your feet. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feet. just a huge fan of you. 
full that, stop. Oh, I, you thank know, you. I'm not going to Wow, that's the third advance. Yeah, I love he goes. Um, he under- really do you know what it is? It's, it's called perseverance. It always works. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so thank you so much for coming on. Thank we really appreciate you. it. You've made Sam have a beer, which is... Uh, Two. Yeah, Let's go and fucking paint yeah. the town brown. Shall we? Well, I'm going to Why town. brown? I don't know. Is that what people say? <laughs> what oh, doing? You paint it means red. something else. Uh, you don't want to paint red. it brown. Right. You don't paint it brown. Why would you paint it brown? You'd be in trouble if you paint the town brown. Because it's rhymed. Paint the town Is brown. That you've got IBS. <laughs> oh, I've got IBS. Yeah, I've That's only just found out actually. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets really bad on flight. I don't know why the fuck I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're nervous. Yeah. On a flight. Yeah, and I literally just. <laughs> anyway. Oh, have you? Hang on, wait a second. So have you had to lock yourself in the bathroom on a flight? Yeah, I literally did on the way to South Africa. We nearly had to land the plane. Wow. Okay. Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, listen, I'm just. <laughs> we're just going to go for this. Gonna have to have a yeah. Pit stop. Yeah. He thought he was having appendicitis. Called all the people over. Got a fucking medic on the plane. The lot on a night flight to South Africa. No. As it turns out, he was constipated. <laughs> No. That's legit true. No. Literally yeah. did that story last week, and uh, yeah, do no. you know what I mean? Oh, Absolutely fucking you. horrendous. No you have such a hard time sitting there. Tough out there. Bless you. Did you say no wonder you have such a hard time sitting there? Sitting what big... next to him? Oh, like sorry. You, I thought you meant you, yeah. one, no wonder you have such a hard time do sitting you know there. You always want it's to shit. It's so nice. <laughs> At some point. It's so nice when you hear that. Bless you. I get it all the time. You know, oh, oh you're just bless you. Bless. <laughs> so um, anyway, moving on from that, um, uh, you have a good night tonight. Thank you so much for coming down. We've absolutely appro- I, we I appreciate it. you. You as a person <laughs> and, and you as a as a oh, as a wow. footwear a footwearer. Just fucking come in. Stop mentioning my stuff. I don't know, feet. I'm panicking now. Just go, shoot from the hip. Um, yeah, genuinely thank you for coming on. We were both very excited about you being here. Um and Can't stop you... blinking at you. I know, I know it is. <laughs> I thought it was Morse code. Yeah. It's like he's trying to tell me, me something. Help yeah, me. like I need to get out of here. I'm I'm here under duress. Um no, you've been a great <laughs> guest and, and and we understand why everyone loves you in the country, oh. effectively. Long words, everyone. Thank, thank you so you. much. The feeling's very mutual, boys. That was Laura fucking Woods. W dog. W dog. I was gonna call her Woody, but I thought that sounded a bit weird. What and you thought W dog would be a better way <laughs> to describe know. her? I don't know. Alright, well let's just go with Laura. Okay, fine. Well, how then. good was that? Uh, she's great. Yeah. Also, question, I feel like I didn't talk over her just then. I feel like I really tried. <laughs> No, I think you did a lot better, actually. Thank like, God! Yeah, no, you did do a lot better. Um, that, that was actually very good. Well done. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm proud of you. I think it's one of our best shows you've ever done. Um, I think mainly because she was so good. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Very, very funny. Um, and, yeah, she jokes, actually. We're going for a drink with her. You need to stop doing that, though. What? Every guest we've ever had on the podcast, you ask them out. Even not like that. We make fucking hell. Put some context on that bitch, mate. Because no, I didn't. I don't ask her out. Let's leave it there. No, let's not um, leave it there. No, you are. You ask to like spend time with them and hang out with them and fucking start. And it's, it's a bit weird because you do it whilst we're recording the podcast, so they have to say yeah, yes. Yeah, that's the whole point. And then Trap- I know, Yeah, but how many of those people have we actually done it with? Well, not anymore. Well, actually, let's talk about it because we slid into to Laura's DMs. We and, didn't. Yeah, you I, did. so, the beauty of me and Pete is we come as one. So it's like we're flirting as one person without the flirting obviously but it's like to hang out and um, so I actually you did it without even telling me so I said <laughs> Dude, don't pretend you don't know because I called Pete after this I went mate thank you so much for coming on the pod today you were amazing the whole team had such a great time as did we let's get a game of darts in at some point with Pete she then went it was so much fun I really loved it what a lovely group you are there you two are hilarious can we I'm buzzing for it first dot darts next dot quidditch she went I'm going to send you some dates and then I went if I know Pete he's going to try and rope us into drinks at Amazonico his second favourite place after strings a little bit of a gag in there so a little bit of a joke and then she went I actually love Amazonico but do they have slippers for him on entry okay dates incoming now after that no dates did come in um and then i called p i called Pete and went what have i done something wrong have i fucked up and then i was going to double down and then pete told me not to double down no we don't double down no we don't double down listen if she doesn't want to play darts with us she doesn't want to play darts with us it's really simple yeah but we could just be like give us the dates Uh, she knows you've said you know let's get darts in if she wants to she will tell us or do we need to be more assertive with it? No, uh, I think what we need to do is leave it at that point. I think we go in again. Just one more. One more. Sorry, I don't know if you got this one. This is why you shouldn't be in charge of the speaking. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? This is You shouldn't take control of organising or doing anything in a social setting. I think I should probably do those bits. 
because you are <gasps> fucking weird. Why don't you double down then? Why don't you go, hey, spoke to Sam, he said dates were incoming, can you let us know because we're quite busy? You are aware that we are on a podcast. Yeah. People can hear this discussion. So what's wrong with that? It's the most pathetic thing I've ever heard. <laughs> we are two 30 plus men trying to play darts with Laura Woods. <laughs> How fun would that be? It sounds mental. We sound absolutely fucking mental. Laura, if you want to play darts, play darts with us. If you don't, it's okay. Yeah, no funny business. Why did it? But now you've made it sound like there was a potentially a connotation of funny. No, things. no. Just, I just give it. Sometimes it's you. I don't know. What do you mean? It's me. Well, I don't know. Like I'm the really approachable person. Like she knows she'll play darts with me. What are you pointing at? Well, evidently not, because she hasn't replied to you. Yeah, that's a good point. That's well, what do you mean? What, do you, what, what, what would happen if she played darts with me? You're a sex pest. Anyway, that was Laura Woods. What an episode it's been. I love you, listeners. Ta-da. What Where did you sing? Sorry, what did you sing? He said, Gimme, gimme, gimme your ass after midnight. <laughs> I don't gimme, gimme, gimme your ass at the midnight. <laughs> like a dance. I'm going really red. Like a dance. We've done. We're finished. I thought it was like a dance tune. Let's just fucking cut the cameras. <laughs>